Climate Week New York City unites leaders from across industries to accelerate solutions for a sustainable future. Acumen's Climate Week interviews shine a spotlight on industry leaders and show how businesses can inspire action, drive innovation, and help shape a resilient, sustainable, and low-carbon future. Iceland is a land of striking natural beauty where glaciers, rivers, and geothermal springs shape both the landscape and a national commitment to sustainability. At the heart of this commitment is Landjerkin, the country's national power company and one of the world's greenest utilities. Founded in 1965 to lead Iceland's energy evolution, Landjerkin now supplies over 70% of the nation's electricity produced entirely from renewable sources such as hydropower, geothermal, and wind. Joining us today is Herder Aronson, CEO of Landjerkin, to discuss how the company is driving Iceland's third major energy transition, eliminating fossil fuels while balancing innovation with stewardship of natural resources. So great to meet you. Thank you. Welcome to New York City. Thank you. When did you fly in? We flew in late last, uh, last evening. I have, uh, tell me, have you been to Climate Week before? No, this is my first time and I look very much forward to it. Yeah, Yeah. and what, what kind of goals are you um, sort of laying out to achieve in this visit? Yes, both to you know, tell people about our, our, our work and also listen to others and kind of to also to kind of gain more support for some of the challenging work we are working on. Do you feel like there's more support this year, let's say, than last year, and if so, why? Yes, in certain areas, or maybe in globally, it's a little bit maybe more tough, but we still, you know, we're, we're, the strong believers are, are there, and, and, and we need to do this, so, so we need to continue. Are you excited about Climate Week? Yes, yes. Look very much forward to it. Yeah, yeah, lots of meetings, I'm sure, right? Yes. But this is your first time to climate Yes, this is my weekend. first time, yes. Uh, so what do you think? Yeah, I think it will be a very, a very interesting topic that are, that are being discussed, and I look forward to participating and listening. Hmm. Yeah, face-to-face -face meetings are important, right? Especially yes, in yes, this space. Yes. It's, it's always, always nice and, right, and right. to hear what people are, are, are working on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Iceland is um, often described as a global success story in the renewable energy space. Can you tell us about Lensverken's role in shaping that journey and what makes your model unique? I think what's unique about Iceland is that the electricity system is 100% renewable and has been for quite some time. And it's also an isolated system. So, so it is kind of proven that it is possible to run in an effective way uh, a system like that. And this is based on strong natural resources that we have in Iceland, uh, especially uh, hydro and geothermal, uh, which has kind of been the backbone of the electricity system. Uh, we are, have been kind of a key player in this building of the system, uh, with about 70% of the electricity produced in Iceland is produced uh, by Landwirken, and we are very proud of our participation in this development. What is the backbone of all this? The backbone of all of this is kind of the, 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 the hydro system. That's really the reliability, being op able to operate that and, and, and control it when needed, the flexibility it offers, and uh, that's kind of the key to the reliability of the oper operation. Electricity has a carbon footprint um, of how much and where does that figure into this discussion? It's very low. It's, it's, I would say it's close to zero. It's, it's at about three uh, grams uh, uh, compared to on average, uh, uh, you know, in, in the world it's about 400. And to, to be classified as a green production, you have to be below 100. So we are far below that, and we, are, we are say we are close to zero. Why did Iceland make such bold choices around energy, and how has that influenced uh, Landsverkin's leadership today? I think we have to go back, you know, it's about 60 years ago when, when Landsverkin was founded, and then when, when kind of uh, very uh, foresight people, you know, said that, you know, we should use this natural resource to create kind of a competitive advantage for Iceland and decided to harness the hydropower and to attract uh, uh, you know, industries to Iceland that uh, needed reliable uh, green energy uh, to, for their operation. And that has really kind of fueled the GDP in Iceland, in Iceland which Iceland has uh, among the highest GDP in the world. And part of it is because of how we have harnessed, harnessed the, uh, the, the, the electricity. But also in the 70s and 80s, we also took another bold decision. We decided to use our geothermal which is our, our volcanoes, to use them to create heat uh, to heat our houses. So, so we can say now that all our uh, uh, heating of houses 
is done by renewable energy and mainly geothermal, which we also use then for, 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 for electricity production. So, so hydro and geothermal has really changed the standard of living in Iceland. And there are long-term benefits to all this. Yes, uh, huge benefits. Uh, both, you know, of course, you know, of course, the cost. You know, it's it's, uh, it's we can produce it in a very cost-effective way, which is very important, in an envi environmentally friendly way and reliable way. Generating all electricity from renewables is a major achievement, which many countries really aspire to. How does Landsverkin, um balance this progress with the realities of the energy transition? Of course, you know, we have to be aware of that all energy pro uh, production has um, uh, an environmental impact. It's impossible to, to, to develop, you know, produce energy, uh, being it fossil fuel, being it uh, 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 nuclear or being it renewables, it has impact on the local environment. That's un inevitable. But what we have done, and I think we have done well, we have uh, uh, made sure that we, uh, that we limit the environmental impact as much as possible. And we do it by, first of all, selecting the right projects. It's very important to select the right projects that are cost effective and you can minimize the environmental impact. And then you have to study what is the environmental impact. You have to understand it before you start. You have to minimize the effect. You have to do some countermeasures to, to, to minimize it. And then you have to explain it to the local community. That's very important to under explain it so they know what's happening. And, and I think our story has shown that we have done this in a very successful way. And we have very strong support in the local communities close to all our power plants, which is a very good sign for us. How does Lensverkin integrate sustainability into its business strategy, both in how you generate power and who you work with? I think you know, uh, just, you know, renewable energy is kind of the kind of the uh, key example for sustainability. Uh, and uh, and uh, in our projects, when you are working with nature, and you have to get social acceptance for your work, you have to have to kind of fit all the three parts of the sustainability. You, first of all, you have to be financially viable. Uh, secondly, you have to have an acceptable impact on the uh, environment. And thirdly, uh, you have to have, you know, have a positive impact on the, uh, the local community. So the financial, the environment, and the social has to go together. If, you, if companies like Landfish are going to get you know, license to operate. And uh, so it is extremely important to, 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 to and it is kind of, a imp kind of in our DNA. You know, we, we cannot work without it. It's long before we, we knew the concept of sustainability, we were doing it. Looking to the future, what role will uh, Landsverkin play in Iceland's next energy transition and in the global fight against climate change? I think we, we will play an important role. You know, if we look at what needs to be done, it needs to be face, first of all, is to face out the fossil fuels. That's, 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 the, that's the big issue. And we will do that, you know, by continuing to build out power plants, you know, build out uh, cost effective, uh, you know, good power plants that have a limited impact on the environment. Secondly, we will do it by, by uh, you know, operating well our existing plants, you know, develop them and make sure that they'll uh, almost go forever. And thirdly, I think it's also important that companies like Landfish can make a good, good example how we operate. Although our, our main contribution is the electricity we produce, we can also do well in you know, minimize our carbon footprint. And we want to, to, to support the, the circular economy and we want to have the positive impact on the local environment. So, so we can also be a very good example. So, so we are definitely focusing on supporting the, the goals of the government to be carbon neutral in, in 2040. But we also say that you know, it's very important that we continue to be backbone of the economy to deliver cost effective electricity to green industries that, that are based on, on, on using green energy, like data centers, like food production. Uh, so we want to continue to support the development, but I think also we have a, have an can have an important role just telling our story. Iceland has a very good story to tell. It's a story of you can build how you can build a completely renewable system in electricity and space heating, uh, and and uh, and a small country in the northern Atlantic that we could do it. I think that should really kind of encourage others to do the same thing. Thanks so much for your time today. Great conversation. Thank you. 
Iceland's story shows that a renewable future is not a dream, but a lived reality. Landsverkin's leadership proves how bold choices rooted in stewardship of nature can power national progress while inspiring global change. As the company advances toward net zero and supports Iceland's third energy transition, it offers a reminder that with vision and perseverance, the path to a sustainable energy future is within reach for all.